fellow translators. Today I want to introduce a handy feature in Translator++ called Batch API. With it, you can translate content at just half the usual cost. Pretty great for bulk projects. But, don't confuse this with the Batch Translation feature in Translator++. Batch Translation is a built-in feature of Translator++, while the Batch API is a native feature of the AI provider itself. In this video, I'll show you how you can translate at half the price with Gemini. On the official Google AI website, you can see the explanation about the Batch API. In short, you can use the text generation model at half the price with results delayed up to a maximum of 24 hours. You can see the clear pricing table from this page. When using the Batch API, we can't immediately see the result. So before sending the payload to the Batch API, let's try to translate it the usual way first. First, open Options and access the OpenAI setting. Even though we'll be using Gemini, don't use the native Gemini API. Use OpenAI instead. We have a lot more option using OpenAI instead of the native Gemini API. There are several presets available, including one for RPG Maker games. I will create a new preset based on this one. Fill in the required information here, including the API key and target URL. The prompt and settings are already adjusted for RPG Maker games, so basically, you can just use the settings as is. However, you can add other information to the prompt, such as character descriptions, anything that will help the AI translate the game better. After that, just close the settings. If an error occurs, reopen the settings to make corrections based on the error information. I forgot to set the model name for Gemini. I will use Gemini 2.0 for this translation. After being satisfied with the sample translation results, we can continue translating the rest. Firstly, I'll translate the message's context. The best practice is not to translate everything at once, but to translate based on the type of text. For example, dialogue messages need different treatment than items, names, or skills. We can use tags to mark all messages through the search feature. I'll also remove the tag for rows that have already been translated. I will now proceed with the translation using the Batch API. You can access the Batch Translation option from the Send To menu. Here, you can find many options that allow you to fully control the Batch API. We also have an option to insert the actor's name on each line with this setting. If this option is enabled, the AI will receive additional information in the form of the actor's name for each line. Since the game I'm translating already explicitly includes actor names in the dialogue, I don't need to enable this. After all, every token costs you money. You can refine the template based on the type of text you're translating. For example, you can ask the AI to translate more briefly for items or skills and their descriptions. You can also automatically add a glossary by enabling this option. Using glossary, you can provide additional information about the characters. 
For example, the character's gender, personality, and traits. This is where you can specify that this character is Tunde Rei and another one is quiet, and so on. This feature is quite powerful and deserves a dedicated video, but for now, I want to disable this feature to save costs. Of course, you could go through and reconfigure everything one by one, but here's the cool part. We have a button here that lets you import your configuration directly from the OpenAI settings. As you can see, everything from OpenAI gets copied instantly. For this batch, I'll whitelist the green tag from my project. And of course, I'd like to save my preset. Now, just hit OK to start processing with the batch API. After that, you can monitor the progress of the batch API through the batch manager. You don't need to keep waiting with this window open. You can close it, shut down your computer, and come back the next day. And of course, without having to wait for one process to finish, you can also create other batch translation requests. I originally planned to continue this recording the next day. However, just as I stopped the recording, the translation process finished. So, as you can see here, the translation was completed in less than a minute. I'd say that's almost the same speed as a normal request, and we only need to pay half the price. You won't find a better deal. Of course, don't expect every process to be this fast. From my experience, the translation time really depends on the model you're using and how many batches you send. But it's not an exaggeration to say that you could actually get faster translation speeds than a normal request, depending on the size of the batch you send. Because, as you can see on Google's official page, the batch API isn't limited by the RPM and TPM of the normal API. But, don't just take my word for it. Try it out yourself. In the batch manager window, you can freely monitor and preview the translation process. It's an invaluable tool for debugging your prompt, helping you refine it for better translations. Finally, press Apply Translation to apply the translation to your project. And that's it! Super easy, right? Translator++ is a free tool for producing quality translations. Download it for free from the link in the description below. Get the latest version by becoming our patron. Thank you for your support. And happy translating!